All right, Prop the Mic, presented by Props.Cash. We have a special guest on today's podcast, Jean-Jacques Taylor, author of the new book, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders and the Making of Men. Great to have you on. Dave and I both just finished the book up. Real excited to talk to you about it. Uh, I guess to get us started, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write the book. Uh, well, the inspiration was real easy. I had, uh, I had done a Sports Illustrated cover story on uh, Dion and Jackson State uh, last, probably about a year ago, last June. And literally, two days after that story came out, the uh, editors at HarperCollins called me and said, hey, we've been looking for somebody to do a book on uh, Jackson State and Dion for a couple years. Uh, we just read your story. Can you do the book? And I was like, well, hell yeah, I can do the book. I said, but... <laughs> Let me, uh, let me, let me text Dion. Let me call Dion and see, you know, if he's cool with that. Cause I can't really do it if I don't have the proper access. Sure. And so I sent him this text that says something like, Hey dog, when you get a minute, hit me up. I need to run something past you. And he called me right away. He's like, what is this mysterious new text you got going on? I said, Hey, uh, book people just called me, said they want me to do a book on your upcoming season. what do you think? And I, I told him what the, what the circumstances were and, uh, how much they were paying me and all this. And I said, so what do you think? He said, uh, I got you, man. Uh, whatever access you need, you got it. And it was literally like that. I said, cool. Appreciate you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was pretty much like that, man. And so uh, from then on, you know, I just got about the business of, uh, you know, kind of relocating to Jackson because I thought I needed to be there to really tell the whole story. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, I know what well, you don't know, but I've known Dion since he, since he just came to Dallas in 1995. Okay. And so uh, we've had a relationship over the years. And so, um, you know, it really wasn't a hard ask for me. It was just a matter of whether he felt like opening up his program and, and having a book done on it. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's consistent. Um, after reading the book, there's a real theme of empowerment, right? Dion really uh, likes to empower his people. So not surprised that when you reached out to him, he, uh, you know, he, he came back to you and said, go for it. It's, it's yours and, and you run with it. Um, like you said, you guys have had a long history of working together. Um, what's one thing you learned about um, Coach Prime during the process that surprised you the most? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a surprise, but when you're up close and personal and you see the consistency that he has about going about his daily business and doing the things he's supposed to do. Uh, and I don't say this lightly because uh, until I was really around him, my father is really the most disciplined dude I've ever known. Mm -hmm. When I say that, I don't just saying, oh, it's my dad. Let me pump it. No, I mean, like my dad, when I was in college, I went to Ohio State. He was teaching at Ohio State. Um, so at that time, I'm 18. So he was like mid 40s. Uh, he would eat a half a gallon of butter pecan ice cream. And then three or four later, hours later, go run five miles and run it off. <laughs> this is what I do. I like this ice cream, but I don't want, I don't want this belly. So I run it off. Uh, when he was a young man, I was a baby. Uh, he had asthma. Doctors told him, Hey, if you keep smoking cigarettes, you're going to get emphysema. Eventually you're going to die. Left the doctor's office, never had another cigarette. So that's what I mean when I talk about a disciplined mind and the, and the kind of just, I do what I have to do which I don't have. I wish I did. Uh, well, Dion is the only other cat I've met up close and personal who has that type of mind where it doesn't really matter what's, whatever is required once he decides that this is required. And that's just what he does. And he does it so consistently that uh, it's really impressive when you see it up close and personal. Very cool. Very cool. I, um, I, think, I think this kind of goes, and I have a feeling that uh, it's going to be a, a similar answer here. But in the book, we learned that Coach Prime, he grew up in a pretty tough environment, right? And uh, I think a lot of people that grow up in those stressful situations don't excel in life. Although there is a part of me that also thinks that uh, that allows, you know, I find a lot of very ultra successful high performers do seem to come from those stressful, tough situations as a child. But you know, what, what do you think is different about Coach Prime that allowed him to succeed coming from that type of upbringing? Oh, I think, it's, I think you're right. It's pretty similar. He decided that I'm really good at sports. I'm, I'm good at some other things, but I'm, I seem to be a difference maker in sports. Mm. Uh, and so, as he would tell you, in his neighborhood, there weren't a lot of options. And so um, I, think he, I think once he decided sports could be a way to take care of his mom, I mean, I, he's made, I mean, you know, he's made no secret about it. He's talked about it often. He told her when he was seven, I'm going to buy you a house. And then, you know, pretty much everything he did after that was based on what can I do to take my mother where she doesn't have to work two jobs, you know, to take care of me. So his mother is his driving influence still is driving an influence and uh, they got a really close relationship. Uh, obviously he's got the same one close relationship with his sister, Tracy. Um, and so, you know, I really think just uh, wanting to take care of his mom drove him to, uh, to excellence. And then you got to have a skill set to do that. But, you know, once he, once he figured out that he could, he had the skill set to do it, it really wasn't hard for him. That's awesome. All right. So I'm, I'm going to read out my favorite quote from the book. All right. All right. Let's see. All right. Wherever you, your feet are, that's where I need you to be at the moment. You remember that one? 
Yeah, I think he's talking to his coaches. Yeah, exactly. So Coach Prime talking to his coaches. Tell, tell us what that means and, and kind of like why that was important for you to include in the book. Well, you know, when he's talking to his coaches and, and you know, he really does this when he's talking about life in general is, and he and I have had a lot of talks about this, which is dominate the moment right then. Don't worry, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about the past. You're in a moment right now. Dominate that moment. And if you dominate that moment, then these other moments and these things that you hope to have opportunities to do will, uh, will come true. And so, yeah, like I said, we've had a lot of talks about this because uh, he's a smart guy and I like to pick his brain sometimes. And uh, even though we're the same age, he can be, he can, he's an inspiring guy when you just, when you literally just BSing with him and you just talk mm -hmm. because he drops his stuff on you and you'd be like, yeah, all right, I feel you on that. <laughs> um, you know, because it's not any different for me. When I say you have opportunities to do different things, if you dominate your moment, and it's like this for everybody in life. Like if you guys and your podcast is a year mm -hmm. old or so, if you get to the point where you're really dominating this moment, this podcast that you have, what will happen? The things that you want to happen, which most people want to happen, I want to be Joe Rogan. I want mm -hmm. to be his audience. I want to make right. $10 million a year. If you mm -hmm. can dominate your moment and dominate different moments, you can get to that. But the next level is whatever it is, whatever your dreams and aspirations are for your podcast. If you dominate your moment, then those things will start to happen and they'll trickle down and then other things will start to happen. So for him, I need you where you are. I need you focused on this moment right here. I don't need you thinking about what happened at home. I don't need you thinking about what's going to happen after practice. I need you to focus on this moment right here, these two hours in practice. If you get that done, all the other stuff you want, eventually, if you do this consistently, will happen. And that's a good thing for you know everybody in life to have. I talked to my son about it. He's a 19-year-old sophomore at North Texas. I talked to him about, it. no, you got to dominate your moment. You, you want this opportunity, and we're talking about it, and you want that to happen. For that to happen, you got to dominate this right here. And if you do that, then that'll happen. They talk yeah. about in my they talk about in my son's school a lot the uh, mindfulness and being present and this reminds me very much of that is it something Coach Prime like talks about like mindfulness is that something that's in his uh, discussions he doesn't, he doesn't use that vocabulary okay. but that's what it is when he's talking about be present yeah. Yeah, and yeah. dominating your moment uh, you know I mean he gets really deep in like you need to body that thing and when you do <laughs> that I mean I mean it's really no different than he would say at, Col at uh, Jackson State why is he at Colorado because he dominated his moment at Jackson State. Right. Mm -hmm. If he dominates his moment in Colorado, if he chooses to stay, he'll stay. And if he chooses to leave, there'll be opportunities to leave because he dominated that moment. And if he doesn't dominate that moment, guess what? There won't be an opportunity. To leave. <laughs> and I'm not saying he wants to leave. I'm just saying, yeah. regardless of what you want, opportunities will present themselves. And you can turn them all down if you want to. But if you dominate your moment, the opportunities will present themselves. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I mean, I started the book thinking this was a football book. And I got probably five pages in and I was like, this is a book about life, um, which is really awesome. So, you know, kudos to you for writing it that way and then kind of capturing that, because I think that really embodies what uh, Coach Prime is about. Well, you know, man, um, and I say this all the time, it's the beauty of sports is that sports is about life. And um, I'm trying to figure out how I want to say it. Like my son played Texas high school football, which most kids do if you grow up in Texas, but he played at the highest level, 6A. And he played for one of those, quote, football powers. And in doing so, um, he got hurt and, it, and his senior year didn't go the way he wanted it to go. Uh, and he was in position for it to go the way he wanted it to go before he got hurt. And then it didn't happen. And all the things that happened before he got hurt, after he got hurt, during the hurt process, every single solitary one of those things was a great life lesson that he takes forward with him now. And we talk about it all the time now. Like, you know, you learn this and you learn that. All these things you learn playing sports. And even when he was a little kid, you know, he played on a team that scored two touchdowns in one season and lost every game. He played on the championship team. He played on a basketball team that lost in a championship. I mean, he really pretty much experienced everything you can do as a kid playing sports between the great highs from winning and the great mm -hmm. lows from losing. Lost the AAU basketball game one time, 71-6. Mm -hmm. to six. You know, all these things. Uh, and then they, they, won a, they won some other tournament. So it's all these things playing sports that builds into life. And Dion does a great job of pointing those things out to his kids and how if you take the lessons to be learned from sports and from this moment at Jackson State, then this will carry you far further than football or sports will. It'll help you be successful in life. Yeah, that's great. So I got to ask you, this Colorado season has been pretty wild so far. No shortage of uh, storylines, including this last weekend. What do you think about uh, writing a follow-up book about this season? Nah, I think <laughs> that, uh, one, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Two is, uh, you know, I think uh, for me, you got to let the story breathe. You know, it seems like, you know, I have a lot of my friends say, hey, you going back up to Colorado, do another book? 
No, no, nah, not really. I really invested so much of myself into Jackson State. And, you know, you got to understand that so I mean, everybody's there. You know, it was hard enough at Jackson State to write about things that people didn't know about. Right. Uh, I mean, that in and of itself is very difficult. Now, the amount of attention is even more magnified. It's even harder to do. And, um, you know, he's getting so much attention and there, there's just so many cameras there. I'm sure somebody's doing it. But it, and here's the deal. If you had a fresh set of eyes, it may be different to you. But he's really using. And this is why I tell people that if you're a Colorado fan, you should get the book. It's because everything he's doing in Colorado, literally everything he's doing in Colorado, he did at Jackson State. Right. If you get the book, it'll help you understand why he's doing what he's doing, how he's approaching it, why it will ultimately work. Because I don't have any doubt he'll ultimately win in Colorado. It's, it's really just a matter of how long it takes, uh, whether it takes three years, whether it takes two years, whether it takes four. But once he starts winning, it's a wrap because he won't lose again. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how successful people do it, right? They find build that template and then execute it over and over again. So it's, it's cool the, to see him doing it. I told Bill Parcells at the Cowboys. How do you think he took four different teams to the playoffs? The exact same script every time. Like, literally, the exact same script every time. Uh, all he did, because when you would talk to him, he'd say, oh, I brought this guy in. He reminds me of Harry Carson with the, with the Giants. I brought this guy in because he reminds me of Bavaro. You know, I mean, all he was doing is doing it. I mean, those people, those of us who play video games, if you go franchise mode, even if you change franchise, what do you do? You pick the same type of players. Every yeah. team, every Those franchise. Guys. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Those are the yep. types of players you like, whether it's power, speed, whatever, yep. depending on yep. what sport you're playing. You put the same team together, the names just change. Yeah, good point. Absolutely. All right, so you mentioned the Cowboys. I got to ask you now. Uh, Cowboys are 3-2, and two, taking on the Chargers tonight, 2-2, two and two, looking to bounce back after a tough loss to the Niners. What, what you're feeling for tonight's game? What's the line on that game? Uh, Cowboys are minus 1.5 tonight. So they're actually, well, actually would, favored. Uh, yeah, I would take the Chargers all day long, but maybe Vegas <laughs> wants you to take the Chargers. Um, yeah, it could be. I don't see – I mean, I picked the Chargers. I accidentally picked the Cowboys in one platform, but I meant to pick the Chargers. Okay. Um, I think uh, if, you look at, if you look at the Chargers, they had a week off, always good. So they're coming off a bye. Uh, they got a terrific quarterback. Uh, they got a really good offense. I think they get Bosa back. I think they get Derwin James back. Um, and, so, Eck and Eckler. And, I mean, yeah, and Eckler yeah. on offense. And so yeah. – they should be feeling good. We got a week off. We won two in a row. We got our boys coming back. And then you look at Dallas. We got embarrassed on national TV. We're down 40. We lose 42-10. Uh, everybody's uh, ripping our offense, uh, including my our star receiver. I'm talking about if you're the Cowboys. Our star receiver, CeeDee Lamb, is mad. He's got to meet with McCarthy. He's got to meet with Dak. Um, this is a huge game for the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy. Uh, we've been banding this about whether we think it's the biggest game in his tenure. Because mm -hmm. if they're 3-3 three three going into the bye, it's not that he's going to get fired. It's just that it's just it'll be such a fail based on expectation and based on the schedule because they end the season um, with uh, it's uh, it goes Philly, then my then Buffalo, then Miami, then Detroit. That's a hard way to end it. And those are games and I ain't breaking no news here. Those are games where you can play well and lose because the other team is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you have to have some cushion. And if you lose this and you're still two games behind the Eagles when they gifted you a loss to the Jets yesterday, it just seems to me that it's just going to be hard to overcome all that because the vibe will be so negative. So, uh, you know, they need to play well. Uh, they need to win. I just don't think they can. And as I say um, all the time, man, it ain't my job to have hope, faith, and optimism that y'all going to figure things out. It ain't right. my job. The glass is not half empty. It's not half full. It's just a half a glass of water. And that's what it is. And I so like uh, I think uh, it's good for business when they win. But I think the Chargers will take them down tonight. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I have a lot of uh, trouble trusting uh, Brandon Staley and those Chargers. They make some, they make some wacky decisions if there. If you give him a chance to give you a win, he will yeah. take it. He yeah. will try his best to yeah. give you a win. Um, yeah. And if they don't do well this year, they should just fire him because yes. he's not a good coach to me. I it kind of, kind of feels kind of feels like this game's going to end on a field goal, either one way or the other, right? I can see that. Um, you know, Cowboys got to get some offense. Their offense has been stagnant, hasn't really found its rhythm. Uh, they'll talk about all the trips to the red zone, but bottom line is you got to score touchdowns. They've been kicking field goals, and I just don't see it, man. They don't have a lot of explosion on offense. They haven't been figured out a way to get the ball to Brandon Cooks. Now, yeah. they did all that in the last eight days, but you had six weeks to get it done, and you ain't get it done. So, again, not my job to have faith that you're going to get it done. So, so one guy we haven't mentioned yet, talking about getting the offense right, is Tony Pollard, right? Coming off two sub-50-yard weeks in a row after three straight 70-plus-yard games to start the season. 
our models here are predicting a big game from him tonight based on the matchups we're seeing in this game. His line, 68 and a half rush yards. You think he bounces back here and, and gets there tonight and has a big game? Yeah, well, you know, some of it is not, I mean, it ain't even about Tony Pollard. Um, in, in the, in the, in the uh, Patriots game, it's a blowout. So we don't, need, we, don't, we don't need you in there. You're our best, most explosive running back. We're up 38 to 3, 28 to 3 at halftime. Take yeah. the rest of the day off. Yeah. Um, last week, it was the opposite. They got behind so early, and they were, they were chasing the game the whole time. They never had time to establish the run. Good so point. today, you should get a much truer uh, performance uh, from Tony and from the run game. Uh, this is also the second week in a row that they've had their offensive line together in terms of Tyron Smith and Tyler Smith and Biotish and Zach Martin and Terrence Steele across the front. So they should have some more continuity. And so hopefully they can move the ball and get the running game going. And if they can, you know, then it'll be a very entertaining game because their offense should click. And if not, you know, Dak uh, historically, and I, I think his cutoff number is 36. If he's throwing the ball more than 36 times, they're losing. And so, mm. you know, they need to be able to have much more of a run pass balance than they have. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate yeah. your I appreciate your point on the offensive line. It's really <clears throat> when Dave and I are handicapping these games, we really uh, that's where we start, right in the trenches right. there, and look at you know the offensive line versus the defensive line, and and, and let the let the plays come to us from there because I really think that dic dictates what's going to happen in the game. So I'm glad you pointed that out. I think that's an import, important important uh, note for this game tonight. Well, Sorry, Dave. Sir. No, absolutely, <laughs> and, and and all the attention is always on the offense, right? Dak gets you know ninety percent of the attention, maybe Pollard right. gets the rest. But the reality is the best player on the Cowboys is on the defensive side in Micah Parsons. Um, absolute beast. Read your article this morning about him. Uh, I believe you said 26 and a half sacks, 33 right. tackles, 56 QB hits in his first uh, two seasons. He's got four sacks already this year. Uh, what are your thoughts on Parsons tonight um, to get a sack? Uh, to get a sack? Yeah, I would, I would think he's, he would get one. Um, plus, uh, he didn't have one last week. Didn't really get a sniff against San Francisco. Um, he's a guy who loves. Uh, I mean, all pass rushers love getting to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a real hunger to do that. And so I, I would expect to mark him down for one. Plus, you know, Justin Herbert has some mobility, but it ain't like he's going to be running around like Jalen Hurts. Uh, he'll be in the pocket. He's there. Um, you know, so, no, I mean, Michael Parsons didn't have a good game last week. Nobody on the Cowboys defense did. Uh, if you did read the story, then you know he takes a tremendous amount of pride in being not just a good player, but the best of the best being a great player. Um, and so most of the time when those guys don't have the game they want, they come back and just wreck things the next week. So I expect him to have a big game. I expect him to be a difference maker, and I'll be surprised if he's not. And if he's not, they have no chance to win. Yeah, agreed. It's, it seems like you like to spend your time writing about the elite, uh, elite, elite guys. So that's great. Love, <laughs> love the article, and obviously love the book too. Oh, well, I appreciate that. But you know, there's there's only so many guys who make a difference. There's only so many guys people want to read about. Uh, you know, I teach a class at SMU on journalism. And I say, you know, if you're covering a team in today's journalistic world, if you're covering the Cowboys. You know, people really only want to read about Dak and uh, Micah Parsons, maybe CeeDee Lamb, mm -hmm. Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy. That's really it. Now, you can write some other things if people have some really compelling stories, but Tony Pollard is not going to drive people to the website. Oh, let me see the story on Tony Pollard. No. So, um, you know, people can be drawn by a compelling story, but other than that, it's like those DJs you say back in the 50s. You, guys, you just got to play the hits and keep it rolling. And your task and your job is to find interesting angles and stories about those very few subjects that people want to read about. And that's where the reporting comes in. And that's where the, the niche and the talent comes in, trying to find those interesting stories about only a handful of guys. All right, cool. Well, uh, I think we don't want to take up too much more of your time. You've given us some uh, some good things to think about as we put together some of our uh, our bets for uh, Monday Night Football tonight, which we'll, uh, we post up on X. We'll have uh, those up what's shortly. The, uh, what's the most intriguing prop bet with the Cowboys game tonight that you guys are putting up? We're putting up uh, – so I, going back to Tony Pollard, we're uh, taking his – the it's over on his rush yards. Yeah. Check the over on that. Yeah, six, <laughs> 68 good. and a half. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah we're, loving, we're loving that play tonight. That's yeah, uh, probably our favorite. So good. that'll be up on X soon. <laughs> yeah, cool. But uh, in the meantime, please go pick up a copy of John Jock's book, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders and the Making of Men. John Jock, it was a pleasure having you on. Uh, thank you so much. All right. Thanks, fellas. I appreciate it.